Um, the next person I would like to introduce is somebody that most of you know. Um, while juggling his main duties as the director of Douglas County Libraries, playing Scrooge at the Christmas production, playing banjo, writing haiku, and um, just his demanding speaking schedule. He's a, uh, he's a Renaissance man if we ever had one. Um, somehow he found time to serve as the chairman of the board for the Parker Economic Development Council in 2010. And in keeping with the tradition, um, and to express our deep gratitude, the Greater Parker Business or Economic Development Council is going to carry on the tradition, of course, of the cornerstone, and will also recognize him as our past chair. So please welcome Mr. Jamie LaRue. I'm Bud. <clears throat> when the Parker Economic Development Council was formed, it was a time of very rapid growth. It was given by a large parcel development back then. The recession of 2008 fundamentally changed that scene. Business as usual really wasn't an option for the PEDC anymore, any more than it is for anybody else in the county. As part of a fresh look at local needs, coalition of PEC, Chamber of Commerce people, and Downtown Development Council leaders put to put up the call. What did Parker area business leaders need today? It wasn't the same thing as what it needed when the PEC was first put together. One thing we learned was that today's economic environment is no longer bound by the town limits, hence greater Parker. We also discovered the need for advocacy, a more watchful, engaged and articulate business world with town officials. And so began the transition to the Greater Parker EDC, as with any significant reinvention itself of the adaptation to the times. It's been a little rocky every now and then. But it is better to act to secure a future than to wrap ourselves in the imagined comfort of the past. I'm very proud of the work we did with PEC, and in particular, I'd like to give a shout out to Mitch Tweedy, which we can lay through here. Mitch was our acting CEO. I have never met a man of such energy, intelligence, and integrity. It was a great pleasure to work with him right here. I also wanted to give a shout out to yes, Mitch. And Kelly must be floating around here somewhere, Kelly Harris, who was uh, Mitch's assistant. None of this happens without assistance. Kelly, over there. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank Josh Rivera of the DDC, who went around with us to begin to investigate ways to change things up, ways to restructure an organization to deliver on the future. And also, of course, with Kyle, who got dragged into it. Um, laughing all the way. So faced with new circumstances, these leaders dove into the community, challenged all of our old assumptions, and dared to imagine a new course. One board stepped down, and one board stepped up. It's an old story. Phoenix rises. I call upon all of you here to join us. Economic development remains a key issue in Douglas County and will for some time, and the greater Parker area. You don't save your way out of a recession. You build your way out of it. I urge everyone here to invest in the new Greater Parker Economic Development Council and uh, come build with us. Thank you. Jamie, um, it's my honor to present you with a small token of our appreciation for what you've done. I have an interesting history with Jamie in that uh, I had the distinct privilege of serving on the library board and ultimately as the president for nine years serving on the board. And it was incredible to watch this man and the way he ran his business in government like a business. And to see him grow it, in 1989, we were rated the worst library district in the state. To last year and this year, the Hidden Library Survey rated us as number one in the nation 
in counties of 250,000 population to 500,000. This is what you got when Jamie LaRue was hired and the staff he has hired. And what an accomplishment. And this truly is taxes that build civilization for us. In working with Jamie, when this came up that we were trying to reinvent an economic development council, I thought, well, uh, the agreement with all the entities was that it had to be somebody new. And I thought, well, probably it's got to be somebody that doesn't have a piece of property in this pipe. I thought, who do I know that's intelligent, even-handed, and will come in and try to learn this problem and work this out? And I realized that some may have thought, well, what are you doing going after a library? But I thought, well, He's the most even-handed guy I know. Let's go after him. And he came in and with a steady hand, uh, guided it through the past year. And some of us, by default, we didn't realize that one of the rules that they came up with was uh, that the new board members had to be people that had not served on the board, the local chamber of commerce, or the DDC, or uh, the PDC in the last uh, year. So that's the way that I, I got the honor. And I, I'm here today once again to thank you, Jamie, for everything that you've done for uh, our city, Parker, and our county, Douglas County. My name is Stephen Strain. I'm the owner of the Warhorse City Restaurant for 28 years in Parker. And I'm the new chairman of the Greater Parker Economic Development Council. Now, usually, many of you know that I speak off the cuff. I was reprimanded from that and uh, also encouraged. But I want to get in a lot of things, so I've written them down and I'll try to be as eloquent as possible. The Greater Parker Economic Development Council is a not-for-profit, private sector, economic development and business advocacy organization. It is the belief of most economic development professionals that the power of economic development and our economic recovery lies in the hands of the private sector. While government plays a vital role as a partner, the creation of wealth occurs in the private sector. Our mission to take action or encourage action by others that will assist potential new or existing businesses to improve their chances of survival and con contribution to the economic growth of Parker. To achieve and maintain the most reasonable, dynamic, and robust business climate in the Southeast Denver metro region by aggressively pursuing all avenues of growth for new and existing businesses. Greater Parker will strive to maximize employment opportunities, tax base, and quality of life for Parker's businesses, people, and its citizens. Greater Parker EDC launched on January 1, 2011 and encompasses all the functionality of the Parker Economic Development Council and the Downtown Development Council and then some. The Greater Parker EDC represents the business community of the Parker region as a unified voice and will work toward affecting policy and needed changes that support the business community and endeavors to enhance the Parker image and experience. Greater Parker is the leader in Parker economic development. At the Greater Parker EDC, we recognize some fundamental truths. Economic growth comes from and is driven by the private sector. It is the private sector that creates wealth. Public-private partnerships are highly effective and are becoming increasingly popular. If managed properly, they are more nimble and efficient than government. It is likely this next year that 70% of all economic growth in the U.S. will come from business expansion and retention. While we will certainly work toward attracting new business, 
but the retention of existing business is paramount. We're pleased to highlight this afternoon just a few of the expansions in Parker. We're going to step a little outside of your contemporary box and we're going to talk first about the Colorado Horse Park. There are several new small shows, but the main event, the Summer Circuit, is expanding from three to seven weeks. This is momentous. Hotels and re restaurants will fill the impact of several thousands of out-of-town guests. These shows are expected to grow to up to 2,000 horses from all over the country, Mexico and Canada. The horse park also hopes and expects to be able to bond for their new indoor arena in the fall of 2012, turning the Colorado Horse Park into a year-round facility which will offer businesses in the community sustained impact. The Colorado Horse Park is second, you may not know, only to the Kentucky Horse Park for volume in the nation. Second, Rocky Vista Medical University currently employs over 180 people, including 80 full-time faculty, staff, and administrators. The University's College of Osteopathic Medicine is finalizing its third year of educating future physicians. There are currently 460 student doctors enrolled in the program, with another 160 planning to start classes in July of 2011. Rocky Vista students come to Parker from nearly every state in the nation with approximately a third of the student body hailing from Colorado. The first class will graduate next year, 2012. Our gym, the Parker Adventist Hospital. In January 2010, Parker Adventist Hospital began performing cases in five new surgical suites. This event marked the completion of the first phase of a $76 million expansion to the hospital that added over 100,000 square feet of new space. The state-of-the-art surgical suites included rooms designed to support advanced neurosurgical procedures. January also marked the beginning of construction for a new hospital wing that will open 30 additional inpatient beds, including 16 intensive care rooms. This may and provides for 28 additional inpatient rooms in the future. Admissions have increased 23% and surgeries have grown 36% over the last 24 months. On February 26, Parker Adventist was awarded designation by the Joint Commission National Quality Approval for achievement in advanced certification as a primary stroke center. In addition, the TRIO Breast Center has received the gold standard in accreditation for breast centers nationally. After a recent survey, the National Accreditation Program for Breast Centers, NAPBC, which is administered by the American College of Surgeons, granted the three-year full accreditation designation to Parker's Breast Program with no recommendations. Parker's Adventist Emergency Department consistently achieves over the 95th percentile patient satisfaction. Small business, RJD machinery. These guys specialize in precision production runs and prototype work for OEM. You may ask what OEM is, I do. Original Equipment Manufacturer. But not limited to the medical equipment industry, aerospace, electronic component, computer storage, optical applications, measuring instruments, pumping, electromagnetic, and photonics industry. They're in part RJD Machine. One of their largest purchasers is another local company, Foxa. The manufacturing sector in Parker is often overlooked because they quietly and efficiently go about their business. But they are more productive than you would imagine. Despite the downturn, RJD grew 22% last year. They just added a new full-time position in quality control, added nearly $350,000 in new equipment. They had global utility patents pending a first-of-its-kind high-end billiard accessory. From aerospace to billiards, RJD certainly does diversity. 
our new future wonder, the Pace Center. This is really an expansion and diversification of the town of Parker. Located in historic downtown Parker, the Pace Center will be home to a 500-seat theater, 250-seat amphitheater, art gallery, event room, dance studio, culinary kitchen, and several classrooms. Pace will provide a wide variety of local, regional, and national cultural, arts, scientific, and educational programming to the region and serve as a rental venue for community, business, and social events. We are excited to be able to add arts and culture to the mix of offerings that Parker boasts. The Pace Center enhances Parker as a destination. With destinations come shoppers, diners, and folks considering a new place to live, and yes, maybe even a new place to bring a business. The Pace Center will bring people to town that otherwise might not have come. New visitors equal economic injection. In addition, when companies look to relocate or expand into new territories, often the more affluent the company is, the more they demand a well-balanced community. That includes parks, open space, environmental responsibility, and yes, arts and culture. Greater Parker is looking forward to working with Janine Bragg and her staff to fully leverage the Pace Center, Parker, Arts Cultural Events Center, Pace Center, and truly recognize it as a driving force in economic development. These are but a few of the very examples. We simply wanted to illustrate what sort of impact existing projects and companies can have on economic growth. Because the Greater Parker is both new and it is a private sector organization, we rely on private sector investment. An investment in Greater Parker is an investment in, it, in Parker itself. We are committed to representing and promoting Parker both locally and nationwide as the place to live, play, and do business. As one of our primary functions, we are also business advocates and work toward affecting legislative policy locally at the state level and the national level that affects the ease of doing business while maintaining Parker's wonderful quality of life. As renowned economist Milton Friedman once said, nobody spends somebody else's money as carefully as he spends his own. Nobody uses somebody else's resources as carefully as he uses his own. So if you want efficiency and effectiveness, if you want knowledge to be properly utilized, you have to do it through the means of private investment. We seem to be strategically placed, not only in Parker, but our county of Dallas, to capitalize on all the improvements that we have made in the last 30 years. To imagine 30 years ago, we had a couple of handfuls of paved roads. The library district was still the worst in the state. <laughs> An education system with only one high school, now we brag about our eight high schools plus two private high schools that we have, football stadiums at the high schools, Arapahoe Community College, Annex, and Rocky Vista Medical University. Astounding. Water. We've got the bucket, Frank. Now let's just come up with the water. Imagine a reservoir with more gallons in it than Cherry Creek Reservoir. We hope to see that in the next 10 to 15 years. Recreation. I tell people, how many of you realize that in Parker, you can come out of the Pinery on the trail, you can ride from Parker to downtown Denver, REI headquarters down there, turn left on Platte River Trail, head down to Chatfield, turning left on the E-470, thank you, director, for the wonderful bike path you have there. Come back to Parker, back to Pondry. It's only a little over 76 miles for you fitness buffs over there. And I believe for you who are not fitness buffs, there are six restaurants on the trail we need to take a look. <laughs> and then finally, culture. I've spoken about the library, but I truly do believe that this is a monumental point of some change in Douglas County 
and that with these wonderful $130 million worth of cultural entities, your year one, $90 million, $21.7 million for the one in Parker, over $20 million for the one in Lone Tree, then we have the outdoor amphitheater and civic screen, and finally the unbelievable Cherokee Ranch Castle down off of Santa Fe. If you haven't had a chance to go down there, you have to check that out. But all this means that we, Parker, and our neighboring communities, we are in a place strategically to become the leader in attracting new home buyers, new businesses, both commercial, light industrial, retail, storefront, office, if we capitalize on what we have built over the last 30 years. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you.